Hello, once again, uh, this video is about Homo Psycho, as I promised earlier. This is my, this is where I live and such. Uh, okay. What I wanted when I originally created the character was for it to be a mixture of thriller movies and like old school thriller movies, not not that old school, but you know, like '90s thriller movies meets Batman. You hear that? Thundering. But it didn't happen. And the one reason that didn't happen was because of the main villain of the story, Homo Psycho. Again, I already discussed some things, and I guess I can go over them again. Firstly, the villain is gay, and people seem to have a big problem with that, and it's trying to insinuate that I think all gays are villains, or that it will perpetrate the stereotype that gays are villains, or, I don't know that's a stereotype. They're afraid that people would use it as weaponry against homosexuals, and I don't think that would happen, but there's always a chance that it would. Keaton. And, uh, also she's a woman, and Again, more ammunition to use against uh, an entire group of people. I don't, you know, an entire gender. I don't really deserve that. And uh, what's another problem? Oh yeah, the rape. There wasn't any actual rapes within the book. I think just insinuating that there is rape, or that there was rape at one point, is enough to piss off a lot of people. And I guess while well, I'm kind of a newbie at this. Not writing, but like, I guess, yeah, writing. I haven't written that many books. Uh, I can't get away with it, you know, even just insinuating it. However, someone like Dean Koontz or Stephen King can just go and launch into epic details about it. For instance, uh, Under the Dome, his newer work, had um, an, a, an actual rape scene in it, and it was discussed in epic detail. Something I would never do. I would never be as ballsy or brass to do that. But apparently he can. And same with Dean Kuntz. False memory. Again, it's not like a penetrating kind of thing. This is getting disgusting. Um, again, there is a rape scene in False Memory. That's one of my favorite books of all time. And uh, not because of that, obviously. But... Yeah, but anyways, I kept my book classy, Homo Cycle. At least as classy as I could as writing from the villain's perspective. This is, of course, after all the rape. <laughs> it sounds silly. It's, um, after everything. It's after everything's spinned down, and she's wanting to branch off and do, and get noticed. And the book itself is about a lady who was sexually abused as a child, or at least nearly sexually abused. Again, I keep it classy. You're welcome. No one. And, uh... Well, when you know, she grows up to be a horrible person who rapes small children. <sighs> yeah. But then again, this, the story, the main story, this particular story, is about her becoming infuriated that she's not getting worldwide acclaim, whereas someone who she feels doesn't deserve the fame, hello, Bugsy, is getting the fame. The Antichrist. That's that's the um, other villain's name in the book. Also a woman. But, but there are also tons of good women within the book. So, you know, take that as you will. She is caught in a restaurant drinking what is believed to be wine, the Antichrist, and turns out to be blood. And this makes Homo Psycho mad because she gets national coverage, whereas Homo Psycho, who's done some far worse things, gets nothing. So she decides to target this person, kill this person, and then go on to kill a senator. That's her whole plan. And there's going to be three parts. Just the first part is fairly short. It's called um, Homocycle Harsh Beginnings. And the second one's going to be called Twisted Innards, and the last one will be called An Unhappy Ending. <laughs> but I didn't write the other two, because people got really mad at the first one. I mean, I can say anything mad. I had this friend who said, this friend said that they would always be there for me, forever. And, uh, took one look at this book, and, 
I think she'd be very happy if I died and she could pee in my grave. I think that would make her the happiest person in the world. And, uh, I mean, the number of friends I lost after I wrote this book is phenomenal. You know, it's it's unbelievable. Most of my friends, maybe like three, I'm still friends with. Everybody else hates me for this book. And it's the one character I regret. Let me think just because it made me lose so many friends. She's a villain within the fictional world and in this world, too. A villain that I created and I hate. One that I wish I never created. One that I wish would die. One that I wish I was allowed to kill. Because the last book was going to be her death. But I can't. Because I don't feel comfortable writing any more of these books. And what's really sad is that it was going to branch off and be an entire series. Not about homocycle. The first two books were going to be about homocycle. The other books were going to be about other villains. But, alas, that didn't happen. It would have been cool. I had some pretty cool villain ideas for the later books. And uh, the first book actually set up an asylum of sorts. But, oh yeah. Hello. It just didn't work out. Because I, I just, I, I, I hate to lose any more friends. You know, I, I cherish the ones I have. And it, it's, I believe the second part which is way worse than the first part, would just kill those friendships that are left over. So I have the homocycle contained in a matter of phrasing. Uh, it's really starting to storm out here. Look at that. And I don't want to unleash her again onto anybody. Just when I saw one of that, you know, she does all the bad things, and I have to answer the consequences. Of course, I made her do the bad things, but that's just that's just that's the point. Maybe it just. I mean, I really like to continue the series. I really would, just not with Homo Cycle starting it off. I should probably pick the lighter villain to start it off. But yeah, she's pretty horrible. She, um, well, I'm gonna tell you everything about her basically, even her childhood. But. In the first book, there's a um, asylum big setting. It's like a national prison setting up in the heart of Texas. That's where the book takes place. And uh, it's going to be like... It's supposed to be like Arkham Asylum in the Batman universe, you know? And that's what, that was what my main plan was, you know, to create a universe akin to Batman with all these awesome villains. But uh, it just got shut down almost immediately. The book is still published, and um, but I do have plans to unpublish it as soon as I possibly can. As soon as I can get to a computer, then I will, uh, you know, unpublish it, so to speak. I'll take it off as available. I won't. I won't make it unavailable anymore. So if you're interested and you want to read it, you can go right ahead. But can you see me? I can't tell. I hate filming myself like this. I really. Would love to, you know, create, put on paper the other ones I have in my mind and the other universe. The main character of Homo Saka is, of course, Homo Saka, but the other books are going to focus on mainly Tanya, the sociopathic police captain. She's a big girl, very big, big woman. My apologies, that I sound like an idiot. And uh, what she does is she catches people, mainly. She has an alter ego, just like Batman. You know, that's who this character is based on, Batman. <laughs> Only she's called Pablo, because um, after she was fired from a police captain, you know, duties, she was, let me see what time we have. We're almost out, so i got to hurry this up. After she was fired, she put on a Mexican wrestling mask, painted it black, and uh, became Pablo to catch bad guys. I thought it was pretty cool, and uh, but unfortunately, it's not going to exist anymore. Even the first book is going to be gone as soon as I possibly can get it gone. So I thank you for listening. I'm Marvin Holland, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.